hey folks, I got some great news to share with everybody. And it's, I finally did it. I have finally developed a I am course for beginners. What this course is gonna really teach you is the fundamentals of I am. We're gonna talk about move a joint lever. We're gonna dive deep into authentication. We're gonna talk all about the different authorization models out there today. And then we're gonna talk about compliance and how that works in I am. I've talked about this course for a long time and I finally did it. Right now, I'm going through the fancy touches. I make sure everything's editing, everything's good, good to go. But I want to share with you one of, the, one of those lessons just to see how everybody thinks about it. And I'm excited that if you do decide to purchase this course, it's worth your while. And the cool part about this course is you're gonna get a hands-on lab. And that's something that I don't think many lessons or many people in terms of I am teaching provide to you, right? There are great content on Udemy, Pluralsight, all the different ones too, and they're awesome. Everybody, every one of those instructors, they're phenomenal. I applaud them. I want to be a little different, and I want to provide to you your own lab. And I'm hosting this lab. So there are going to be three tiers of this lesson, and I'm sorry, not lesson, of this course. And within this course, you can have the basic where you get the entire presentation, the slides, lessons, all that good stuff from there. Then there's a middle tier where you're gonna have everything from a presentation perspective. There's an I am roadmap that I've developed for you, which is basically outlining everything that you can do to get into I am step by step, how I believe you should go in I am. It's 22 pages long, and I think it's a great thing to add on, and you actually get a access to labs. The premium tier that I'm providing is everything that you have from their presentation, the roadmap, the hands-on lab, but I'm also gonna give you a one hour coaching with me where you can ask any questions, anything you want, and with things a deep dive that you want to ask me about, that's all yours. And for the hands-on lab, just to give more detail, you're gonna use Keycloak, which is an open source IGA solution from there. And I believe personally that the best way for you to learn I am is, yeah, the core concepts, those are great, but to me, it's getting the hands-on experience from there. So that's what you're gonna get in this course, is you're gonna get hands-on labs. I'm gonna walk you through everything, and I'm gonna show you how to do various things, such as join a mover lever, MFA, all those good things that I and people should know. So, with that being said, I'm gonna drop a quick sneak peek of one of my lessons. Let me know what you think, and it's gonna be dropping real soon. Thank you so much, see ya. Hey folks, welcome back. So in the last lesson, we talked about RBAC and how it's used today. Now let's focus on ABAC or attribute-based access control. Attribute-based access control is very different from RBAC. What we are looking for is access is now granted based on attributes, not roles. And what do I mean by attributes? It is we can use things such as a user base, your job title, your clearance level, resources, is it something that's top secret, some classification, which we'll talk more about when we talk about Mac and DAC, and then environment base, which is time of day, location. So think about is, is where am I at on a certain time frame, and how is ABAC good for me? And the pros for ABAC is it's fine grain, where you have an RBAC roles, and these roles could be a couple of entitlements, Based, that creates a role, but just like in the last lesson where we talked about some of the limitations of RBAC where at times you can give too much access or entitlements for somebody just to meet a role. Where in ABAC, we can use particular attributes to give somebody access versus a role, and that gives us more flexibility and it's more to the point or granular when it comes to access. So for example, I could have certain attributes such as I'm only allowed to log in during business hours, Monday through Friday, let's say from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 9 p.m., whatever you, you want based on your time zone, and then maybe your location of your common IP, that could be some attributes that we use, plus you have a job of engineer or manager or VP, whatever, those are the attributes you can use 
that will allow you to make decisions to give you access from there. Some of the big issues when it comes to ABAC though is it can be complex. And what I mean by that is you have so much access or so many things that are built in in let's just say your Active Directory system or AD, okay? If you work for a big company and it's been established for years, business for decades, there can be so much groups, objects, permissions that were granted or created that might not have the best business name. I've seen many times in my career where you have organizations who use these complex or crazy numbers to, to give access and a lot of people don't know what that means. And that could be an issue and that's a big con where you see data is bad because sometimes you don't know what it is and you can't really grant access to it until you do the research. And for some companies, that takes a lot of time and a lot of user hours or what we call manpower or just user in general. That is so much time consuming and in this day and age where time is not your best friend, that's where this can be an issue. And that's where complex agencies or complex places or organizations, which is so overlapped, so many objects, it's hard for you to really take the time to do it. And when it's done properly though, it's beneficial, but that's again, a con is the time base to do it. And if there are bad AVAC imitations, it's hard for you to, to replace it because then you're taking away maybe existing access that people have today that they still need it and then they can't do their jobs. And that's a big issue when it comes to ABAC and cons. And then finally, again, if your data is awful, ABAC's not gonna work. And that's kind of where you need pristine data, pristine attributes to make sure they are legit. The source of truth you're getting it from is accurate to the best of their ability and it doesn't change. And if it does change, we are prepared for it and adjust accordingly. Because if not, ABAC will fail. But overall though, ABAC is awesome when it comes to providing access. You can be flexible, you can be very granular, and as long as you have good planning and clean data, ABAC is gonna be awesome for your organization because you can be very specific. At least privilege will be there for you and you can be happy with your implementation of ABAC. Now it comes time to think about when should I use RBAC and when should I use ABAC? Here's something I want you to really consider, and especially as a beginner, is look at your organization and are their roles clear? Are their responsibles accurate? And do you need to do something that is fast and quick to manage and audit? And you don't really need fine grained access. A good example is if you work for a startup agency who, let's just say, bought Okta, for example, you might not need to be so crazy. You might need to just be off the gates and say, okay, we have a certain level of roles or people who work here and let's just create them from now. And as we scale or get bigger, maybe then we start to look to more for the ABAC, which is exactly here where you are a more bigger environment or your dynamic workplace is very huge. You want something that's more fine-grained in terms of access and you want to make sure that the level of access is is to the point in my, uh, to fine, sorry, that's very fine grain because of maybe the sensitivity of your data, that's something where ABAC comes to play. And if you're some organization or some agency who wants to be zero trust, ABAC is a solid and a good decision to be made. And again, as you scale, it's very foolproof. It's huge from that perspective. So in summary, RBAC is really more simple and straightforward. ABAC is you're very powerful and flexible. And it really depends on your use case of which type of methodology for authorization you want to use. I really hope that this gives you a good idea of what ABAC is, but also a good idea of when you, should you use RBAC versus ABAC. And then in the next lesson, we're gonna talk more about some other ones that you might not have heard about. And the next one is Mac or machine-based access control. And we're gonna go from there. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next lesson.